Navigator was a year-long pivotal phase three trial that evaluated the effect of tezepelumab in a broad population of patients living with severe uncontrolled asthma. And it included in the study the range of severe asthma phenotypes, uh, those with eosinophilic and non-eosinophilic disease and allergic and non-allergic disease. Now, tezepelumab is a monoclonal antibody that blocks the activity of TSLP or thymic stromal lymphopoietin, which is an epithelial cytokine that acts at the top of the asthma inflammatory cascade and has been shown to play a central role in allergic and eosinophilic inflammation, as well as airway hyperresponsiveness. Now, in the Navigator results that were published in the New England Journal of Medicine, tezepelumab demonstrated a statistically significant 56% reduction in exacerbations compared to placebo in patients with severe asthma. And, but importantly, with a 41% reduction in those with blood eosinophil counts less than 300 cells per microliter, and on the flip side, 70% reduction in those with blood eosinophil counts greater than or equal to 300 cells per microliter. And in fact, asthma exacerbation reductions were seen with tezepelumab in patients regardless of baseline blood eosinophil count, their pheno level or fractional exhaled nitric oxide, um, or allergic status. Uh, and then when we looked at events that required more significant medical attention, such as those requiring ER visits or urgent care or hospitalization, we saw a 79% reduction with tezepelumab. Improvements were also seen with lung function, with asthma symptoms, asthma control, and asthma-related quality of life. And in safety analyses, adverse events following tezepelumab were similar to placebo. 77% uh, of patients receiving tezepelumab versus 81% receiving placebo reported any adverse event. Uh, and with serious adverse events, it was 10% of patients receiving tezepelumab versus 14% of patients receiving placebo. Well, no, the results were not surprising to us because in, in Navigator, we had seen already improvement that the lung function improved early on. The first measurement where we did lung function testing with traditional uh, spirometry in Navigator, the first measurement was at two weeks. There we saw an improvement in FEV1, but we had no earlier measurement. So we didn't know if prior to that two week time point, maybe the lung function improved in these patients. So in, in this analysis that we had shown in chest, we use a different method, which is the peak flow meter. It's a simple uh, test that the patients can do at home. It assesses how fast and how well the patients can blow out the air. That is what, what is impaired in the patients with asthma. And they had a simple device that they could use every day at home, measure in the morning, measure in at night, every day. And so that allowed us to look even earlier than the, that two-week time point if that improved. And we did a weekly average of all those uh, measurements that I did at home and could identify that as early as one week, the peak flow had already improved on those patients. And definitely this is important to, to highlight because um, patients want to feel better and uh, blowing out air is impaired in asthma. So uh, to identify that these patients could improve the peak flow as early as one week may potentially imply some patients that they could breathe better early on. And obviously reinforcing, as Chris said, that by targeting TSLP on top of the inflammatory cascade, we were proving with this that these patients could have a clinical benefit with it. Um, so with regard to limitations, um, not particularly. Um, you know, it's easy for a patient to, to measure the peak flow, um, as JP mentioned, simply by blowing hard and fast into the device. Um, this can vary um, patient to patient, depending on their effort, um, et cetera, but the study is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled comparison. So those differences between patients um, are going to balance themselves out um, in, in the results of what we saw. Um, and I think that's one of the big strengths of this analysis. Um, and as, as JP mentioned, it was really impressive to see uh, that we saw a difference in peak flow, both in the morning and evening, as early as week one. Uh, and it actually steadily improved through um, week five. Uh, and after that, it plateaued and, and remained steady through the end of the study. The clinical implications are that uh, really with this, we are proving that there is a potential treatment option for patients, not only to improve their symptoms, to reduce exacerbation as we, as Chris already summarized very well from the Navigator trial, but then on top of that, also adding that lung function improvement and that ability to breathe better. So that, and as early as one week is definitely 
in the in in the scenario where these patients have had a disease for many many years to have the ability with these treatment options to feel better or have an objective measurement that improves early on is something that definitely will benefit many patients and obviously treating physicians for those patients that still until now remain uncontrolled and don't have any treatment option that can improve that. Uh, no, actually, I mean, I think we've, we've covered it very well. I mean, the, again, you know, presenting this additional analysis at chest of the um, peak expiratory flow um, in the tezapomab versus placebo group um, really just built on what we knew from Navigator from the primary results. We had already seen, as JP mentioned, the, the lung function improvements uh, by FAV1 as early as week two. Uh, and now we see these differences with peak flow as early as week one. Um, and uh, the steady improvement in both the morning and evening time, uh, which just gives us more faith in the ability of tezapelmab to improve outcomes for patients living with severe uncontrolled asthma. Uh, 